All right, hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today I'm going to do a video on corners in the run game, where you would expect to see corners fit in the run game, and then some situations that I think you need to talk about where corners are going to have to show up in the run game. Make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, sideline replay company we use at Bishop County High School. I've used them the last five or six years, the last two programs I've been with. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, check out GameStrat. Dome Hats, a headwear company we use. Uh, Bishop Kenny High School, I've used them at every school that I've been at. Uh, the last three jobs that I've been at, and we use them with PlayFest. This is my custom PlayFest hat. You can see PlayFest football on the, sign, on the side, Dome logo on the other side. So if you're looking for custom hats, make sure you check out Dome hats. Stock hats suck. Baker Sporting Goods Company we use for coaches gear, spirit packs, our sideline gear on game nights. Uh, our uniforms are distributed from them. They're in the shoulder pad world with pro gear. If you're looking for a one stop shop for coaches, players, fans, teachers, all your gear, one convenient location, check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play Football, which is the playbook software we use at Bishop Kenny High School. I use it with my Patreon site. I use it anytime I'm going to speak at clinics. If you're uh, if you want a good presentation mode, an easy uh, drawing tool, I think it's the best drawing tool on the market. We use it in our team meetings, we use it in our installs, we use it in a lot of different ways. Make sure you check out Just Play. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. You get thousands of reps, don't need a partner, don't need to teach anybody how to hold a bag, use resistance, any of those things. You don't have to worry about injuring a player that's holding a bag. It's just your player striking the Difference USA machine. They hook up to the racks in your weight room currently. Make sure you check out Difference USA. All right, so when we're talking about corners in the run game, I think one of the uh, you know, most common ways you would look at corners in the run game would be the old school cover two version. So you're playing cover two, old school, traditional corner is that jam, funnel, sink, D-gap, flat player, okay, that you used to see way back in the day when the game was, was played a little bit differently. You see it probably more uh, in NFL world uh, because of the ball being in the middle. In the high school world with where the hashes are, it gets tougher to do uh, to play traditional cover two jam funnel sink, especially with the ball in the middle or to the field. Now into the boundary you can get away with it, but that's usually one of the more traditional ways you see the corner involved in the run game. All right, and then when, you know, when things got a little bit more spread orientated, 10 personnel, all right, 11, 20 personnel with a lot of two removed, it kind of gets you out of that world, although you still can play it, we play it, all right, in certain situations. We just don't like our corner being a force player so far removed, right? And one of the things you started seeing to help the corners out a little bit was more of the slice technique, all right, where the corner may start off, but then on the snap of the ball, he's gonna kind of dive inside to become that D gap, all right? The force player, he's still a flat player, but what this does is it lets the corner get inside without being blocked, right? So when you're that original alignment, that's that kind of jam funnel cover two, that's tough for a corner to do because he immediately gets turned out by a receiver. You've got to be really physical to play that spot. So sometimes when you have smaller corners, it's a little bit easier to play that off kind of slice technique where you're cutting into the flat from all right depth where it looks like you're an off player and now you're diving inside of one. It makes it a little bit easier. Tougher to play the passing game when you get a pass read if you're on the move inside. We don't get hands on one, so we don't get that good jam funnel inside on one. All right, but if one's the only threat out there, you don't need hands on him as much, all right, if, if you have the high safety there. If you had a two-receiver side, that's where you re really want to get hands on number one. But I think some of the other ways that you really need to think about your corner in the run game is when teams like to be 21 personnel or they like to use tight ends and they're going to close a tight end on the backside. So if we just looked at this from traditional 4-2-5 settings, So if you're a traditional 4-2-5 split field coverage team and you set the 3 and the 7 and then you set the A shade there, if your Sam goes to the passing strength and you're going to play some version of palms or 2 read out there, now what's going to happen is to the nub tight end side, you've got to recreate some numbers because they're adding a tight end in the box and a helmet. They still have a fullback, so there's an extra helmet. They've taken the Sam and they've kind of moved him away from the run fit, so he's nowhere near as involved in the run fit all right, when he's walked out or apex, and they've taken his safety out of the run fit if you're playing two read. 
So what normally happens is you'll play a safety down and then you'll play a corner a little bit higher. But in order to equate numbers, in order to figure out how you're going to get numbers in the run game, this corner that's playing the high part has got to be able to add himself if the tight end is going to put hands on. So if they were running some type of gap scheme and they were going to, or a pin pull scheme, let's say they're going to down block the seven, down block the three, they're going to get a full back out and maybe a guard out, right? And now they're going to run some type of pin pull scheme. Well, now to equate those numbers, you may need the corner to show up to be the extra body. So if the safety was there and the mic ran over the top, that's two for two on the pull-ups. Now we're going to need an extra body. So this corner really ends up playing almost like a robber or quarters safety. So now you need a corner to another tight end that's going to have to show up in the run game. He's going to have to be involved in the run game if you want to get extra helmets to the ball when you start to see these types of looks, these types of sets. Right? So not only is it the willingness of the corner to get involved, not only do you need corners that can tackle and you need corners that are all right, okay sticking their nose all right, or their face in the fan, so to speak, if you want to look at old school terminology, but you've got to have a scheme that allows them to do that. So if we're going to play an inverted half technique with the safety down and the corner high, the only threat the corner has to the deep half is the tight end. If the tight end puts his hands on the seven and he can't get to the half, we really don't need to be deep half players. Okay, so in that instance right there with hands on, low hat, run blocks, that corner is going to have to add himself. So that's one of the ways that you'll see corners have to be involved in the run game. Another way you might see it is when you start to pressure. Okay, so let's say you're a, using some zero pressures. All right, let's say somebody wants to go maybe tight end wing, twins on the back side, one back stuff. And you're 4 two, 5 and you're going to run some version of a zero pressure. All right, so let's just say you're going to bring the Sam from one side, okay, however you want to do it, however you want to cancel gaps out. All right, if you want to bring him under, you could also bring him under, however you want to do it. And then you're going to bring the Will from that side, so you got double edge coming. Okay, so now you're going to end up, all right, let's say your mic is on the back. Well, to this side, you're going to have a corner and a safety that are playing man-to-man -man on a tight end and a wing, and then you're going to have a safety in a corner over there. So now to this side right here with a tight end and a wing, even though you're bringing six, the offense still has enough helmets to pick all this up. Okay, so on the front side, they've got four helmets. We've got three blitzers and the mic if he adds himself. All right, I'm sorry, three defensive players, one blitzer, two down linemen. However we want it to gap it, it really doesn't matter how we choose to gap it out. All right, we can't get with the wing there. We're not going to be able to get all those gaps covered, even if we left the end in the C, brought him to the A. All right, even if we said with the mic in the box, let's leave the A gap open and let's leave that there. Maybe we'll bring the Sam off the edge because we don't want runs going wide. Either way, they have four bodies for three players and the mic, so they have four for four. So where are you going to gain extra players? The corner, as a man player, is going to be involved in the fit when his player puts his hands on somebody. So if the wing tries to block out on the blitzer, and this is one of the harder things that you've got, number one, you've got to show it to kids. You can't just expect it to happen in games. And number two, then you have to have kids that have kind of a feel for what's going on in the game of football. I'm playing man-to-man -man on a player. But the player I'm playing man-to-man -man on is blocking another player, right? So it's almost like how do we switch if we were playing basketball and we got pick and rolls or how do we play pick and rolls? If I'm playing man and my, the guy that I'm guarding is going to block the blitzer, well, obviously the blitzer now, if he's blocked, he's going to have to beat a block, get off a block, right? But numbers-wise, the blitzer's being blocked. They've still got... Let's say if they wanted to block down there and double there and go to the mic. So right now the blitzer and the mic are both blocked. The only way we can get helmets to the ball is the guys playing man, and one of them happens to be the corner. So now your corner in a man theory is going to have to understand that when he gets the blitzer being blocked by the guy that he's covering, all right, we're going to have to show up, and that's really not much different than like a crack replace deal. All right, so if you were running crack replace, another way your corner is going to have to show up in the run game. 
All right, so that's kind of like a crack replace deal when you're playing man to man and you're blitzing. All right, or even if you weren't blitzing, if you were playing man under two deep or you were playing any type of man to man and your guy is blocking somebody, you can't just keep dropping into coverage. You've got to add yourself because the guy you're playing is blocking somebody else. They're going to end up with numbers or leverage if you don't add a corner. Right? So that's another scenario when you're pressuring, the corner may have to show up. All right? In today's game, what you're going to see a lot, especially to the perimeter, and you see it in the NFL all the time, guys are going to make corners make tackles. Right? So you're going to see teams that make corners make tackles. So let's just say for argument's sake, if we were a two-read team. So if we were a if we were a two read team or a palms team, so if we were playing palms with two read, we would love the safeties to be the support players in the defense. Most people, when they when they choose their defensive players, corners are better cover guys, safeties are better tacklers. But you're going to get some teams that are going to force the issue on you, where let's just say they push the back. All right, let's say they push the back to throw them the flare, and they're going to crack the Sam, and they're going to crack the safety, and they're going to tell the corner he's got to show up and make tackles. The NFL does it all the time. NFL offensive line coaches, they love pushing and cracking the box and sending the ball to the corner because their theory is corners don't tackle. So now your corner is going to have to show up in the crack replace world. So you've got all these different scenarios, and when your corner is going to have to show up now, this, to me, is just extended run. I know the video says corners in a run game. Let's look at it this way. Maybe it was some type of bash theory where maybe they were going. Some type of quarterback dart scheme and running him on toss, and the quarterback's going to shuffle read the defensive end. If the end squeezes, he's going to pitch the ball, and it gets on the perimeter, and they leave the corner unblocked. If the end widens, quarterback runs dark, right? So there's a version of the run game. So your corners are going to have to show up. There's crack replace. There's cover two. All right. There's tight end nub. Things like that. Another one I think that you've got to look at is if you if you use any like three under three deep pressures, and this has already happened to us this season. So let's just say you had like a three under three deep pressure, and let's say a team was in three by one with a tight end on the backside for argument's sake. Okay, and if you had it set. Whoops, sorry. If you had it set where the pressure was coming, all right, the pressure, you had the Sam walked out there, all right, you had the mic in the box, maybe the wheels over there, all right, and you've got a corner, and you've got a safety rotation where you're going to, all right, maybe you're bringing the Sam off the edge to the field, you're rotating down behind him so that safety's got to go to the middle. Well, now to the nub side, you've got a corner that's playing a third technique. Okay, and he's playing a third technique off a nub tight end. All right, so he's playing a third technique off a nub tight end, and you get some type of stretch run coming this way. And let's just say that this team is good enough to where they can get, all right, out to the seven, up on the wheel, and now they're good enough to get the center up on the mic. All right, so if a team's running stretch and they're good enough to do all that, and you're running a Three under three deep pressure and the two seam D gap will linebacker can get blocked. Well, the guy that's playing the third technique off of just an up tight end, similar to what we talked about last time, I start to pedal to go to the third, but the nub tight end is putting his hands on the will linebacker. There's really no need for me to be in the third anymore. I'm gonna have to come up and get involved in the run fit. Okay, so there's several scenarios where corners are gonna show up in the run game. Now are you going to design your defense to have corners show up in a run game? Not a ton. We do it into the boundary. We use both techniques. We use jam funnel sink. We use trap or slice techniques. Okay, so we do have some situations where the corners are in the run, all right, or in the run fit or involved in the run game. Okay, but for us, most of the time, we're building that support around the safeties. So there's going to be scenarios that are going to come up throughout the season where you're going to have to teach corners. You start getting up tight ends, and corners don't, if they've never seen it, they don't know how to get involved in a run game. They're constantly just backpedaling. Teams are going to get leverage and hats on you, and the corner is going to be the only guy left that can be an extra fitter to make a play, and you don't want him making plays nine yards down the field all the time. All right, you're going to start the pressure and some man and zone pressures, and the corner to certain sets, teams are going to run. 
corner is going to have to be involved, whether he's a man player or he's a third player to a nub tight end. So you've got to be able to create the pictures in which the corner needs to be involved in run fits. You need to teach him what he's reading and what his technique is when his man or his threat to his third or deep half put hands on people, how we transition up to get involved in a run game because it's the only way that you can equate numbers. So in your, in your base defensive structure, you normally won't design corners to be run fitters in a ton of the things you do, but teams are going to run things and formation you into situations where based on the structure of defense you play, the corner is going to have to be in the run fit. All right? And most of us know the old traditional way, the cover two, old fashioned hard cover two, all right, with the corner as a force flat player, jam funnel sink, hands on one. Most of us know that theory of the corner in the run game. But he's going to show up in a lot of different places in the run game versus a lot of formations that if you don't do a good enough job showing him those formations and teaching him when he needs to be involved in the run fit and when he doesn't. So for us, one of the big things we got to do is we got to let him know, hey, here's where I need you in the run fit. Here's where I don't. You've got nothing to do with the run. So when it's time for him to show up and he can peek his nose in there, he needs to show up. But when it's time for him to be over the top or the formation dictates that the ball could be pushed vertically and I don't need you in the run fit, now he's got to know the difference. So we're constantly talking to our guys about, hey, you're not involved in a run fit at all. Make sure nothing goes over your head. Hey, this guy gets hands on. I'm going to need you in a run fit because I'm short numbers. Okay, so again, you don't really want to diagram it all the time for your corners to end up in a run game. But teams are going to formation you. There's going to be situations where the corners have to show up in the run game. You've got to be prepared for that. They better know how to tackle, want to tackle, and know how to transition to get involved. Otherwise, they're going to be 8, 10 yards down the field making tackles, and that's not a good deal. Okay, so remember, the offense is going to dictate some things to us. We know the structure we want to get in, all right, and we know how we want to play defense, and the corners might be number 10 and 11 on our list of guys we want involved in the run fit. But offenses are good enough nowadays where they're going to figure out how to get those guys involved, and you're going to have to teach your guys how to be involved, how to tackle, how to get downhill and not make plays at 9, 10 yards. All right? If it's old-fashioned, three deep, and he's the last resort, he's secondary contained, and he makes a play 10 yards down the field, that's great. But if he's actually somewhere needed in the fit, and he's the extra fitter, or he's the extra helmet to a tight end upset, you're going to need him downhill making plays. So I hope this video helps you guys understand how and where you may need corners in the run game on defense. All right, remember, click that subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you turn your notifications on. You know every time we do a video or go on YouTube live, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like the video or don't like the video, it lets us know what we're doing with our content. And as always, leave a message. I try to respond to every message that I possibly can that I see on my end. All right, if your season is going, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're healthy. Hope your player's are healthy. Hope you've got some wins under your belt. If you haven't played yet, good luck to you. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. See you guys next time.